Hey, Boko Tov, Ma'adim, Lissim Chal, today's the office of Tzadik Zion, in Ksubis, as we learned from Porshul and Pelosa Ben Ruma. <clears throat> so, right from the top of the page, Kate said the last word on the first line, Kate said Mocheres. We talked yesterday about a woman uh, who, uh, her husband died, and he could, she could sell uh, property that really goes to the Orshim in order to collect Mizonos and to collect her Ketubah. We'll talk more in detail about that. But when he says, Kate's Mocheres, how does she sell? Specifically about the Mizonos. We talked about Mocheres with Sevastam, uh, and she says it's for the Mizonos. That's the Machlok is about the Mizonos. In other words, when she's collecting for Mizonos, she needs food. So she doesn't have to wait to go to Bezdin for that because, uh, you know, that'll take time. You have to go to a court. She needs to eat right now. So <clears throat> Misha said, the Bryce said, we're going to talk about it in, in the next mission also that she's allowed to sell property, real estate of the Orshin in order to collect, in order to collect Mizonos. So Kate says, how does she do that? Amar Abdeniel, Baruch Tina, Amar Afuna, Macheres, Achav Hashem, Once every, once a year, once every 12 months, she can make a deal to sell this property. But the purchaser supplies her only once every 30 days, meaning he, let's say they make a deal $120, she sells a field for $120. He gives her $10 a month, once a month. He doesn't pay the whole amount at one shot, why? Because if she gets married in the meantime, then she loses the Mizonos, right? She loses the Mizonos once she's married. She's supposed to support the husband, the, the husband uh, agreed to in the Ksuba that he's going to feed her as long as she doesn't get remarried They'll feed her from the Yorsham's uh, estate. But uh, if she needs to eat and the Yorsham don't give her food, she's entitled to go sell the field, one of the fields, let's say, and she sells it annually, but the purchaser only pays it installments once every 30 days. So in case she gets married, in between, they can give the rest of the money back to the Yorsham. You don't sell for a whole year at a time. Only six months at a time, the same idea that you only pay it installments. The purchaser only pays, gives her the money in installments once every 30 days. So if she gets married in between, the rest of the balance of the money, he can turn over to the Orsham who are entitled to it. It's their, it's their estate. The machlokas here was, do you sell for a whole year at a time or for six months at a time? Same thing, do you sell it for a whole year at a time, make a deal for a whole year at a time. Maybe you'll get a better deal then. That's what Rafuna said. Tanik was a but we have a price like a Yuda, Macharis, the Shisha Kadashim, who came from Paris, Achsashimam. But you only sell for six months. In other words, you sell enough for six months at a time, or do you sell enough for a year at a time? What's the basis of the Machlokas, right? Presumably, uh, what, what would be a better deal for the Orshim, or maybe a better deal for her. Uh, but the question is, how much she might treat her? Technically, you could say, just do it every six months. Maybe she'll get married in between. Maybe you don't be much uh, more than once a year. That's the machlokas here. The psak is like Rabbi Yehuda, that the bride is like him, that you say, she only sells once every six months. But the purchaser supplies or pays her that amount of money, the money that she would need to buy food. He only gives her the money once uh, once a month in installments. So you just said, uh, a Mamer said that Allah is like Rav Yudah. What about Rav Huna's Allah that he said, you only sell once a year, not every six months. I didn't hear what Rav Huna said. I don't hold of his Allah. There's a price both ways. And a Mamer Paskin like Rav Yudah. Of course. That's her lean is the Ksuba. The Ksuba is her lean, yeah. So she remarries or whatever. The Ksuba is her lean. The Ksuba entitles her both to Mizonos and to the $200 or the extra, whatever's on there. And that's her lien, yeah. Here's a question. What happens if she sells fields for Mizonos? She sells them to the uncle. She sells the fields to the uncle so that she can eat. She's hungry. The Yorsham don't have any food or their children or whatever. She sells the food, she sells for food. And we said she could sell for food, even not by going, not with a court order, not going to court because she has to eat. Uh, for the Ksubas, we'll see that's different. The Ksuba, he said, for the Ksuba, she has to go to court, right? Uh, because that's not something that she needs right now to eat. But for food, you can't wait. You can't wait till you come to court. She needs to eat so she could sell even without a bezin. 
But when she sells the fields for the Mazonos, <laughs> here's the question. She sold the field to Yanko because she needs food, right? Sold for a year. And let's say she sold the field for $200. Now, when she collects her ksuba, the Yorshim have no more money. They don't know what to pay her for, no more Yorshim. So she goes back and she goes back to the same Yanko that she sold the field. She says, well, listen, I got a ksuba over here. That's my lien. I have a ksuba. So she sold the field to somebody from his own house, and now she's going after the same field for the same guy that she sold it to. Does that work? Can she go now and demand and seize the field from these guys? Why? Because they bought it yesterday. Her lien is from the Ksuba when she got married 20 years ago. She has a prior lien. The question is the pen of Yosef, the Roma of Yosef, Armelosa, Zub, the Zavanachlai, the Zavanachlai, he asked me, they did it, Zavanachlai. The question is dependent on, 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 Yosef, on the basis on Rabbi Yosef's point. Why? The Yosef says that an Almona who sold a field, who, who has to be responsible for that field? In other words, you sold a field, that's you sell a field with a chryas, meaning that if somebody takes away, I'm going to make good on it. Who, who may has to make good on it? The Yosemim. Because when she's selling the field, she's selling it on behalf of the Yosemim. They should either give her the field, give her the money. If they don't give her the money, she has to go sell the field. So here, this Almona who sold the field, who, who is the, who's responsible for it if somebody takes away the field? Well, Rabbi Yosef said, the Yosef the, the, the it has to come from the estate. Similarly, if a Besdin, let's say she went to Besdin, she didn't do it on her own, or Besdin sold the field, the Yosef is on the Yosef. My, even the Yosef, they asked me, Tarko, do you say since the, the Yosef is on the Yosef, meaning she sold the field to them, right, with the Who's responsible for it? The Yosemim. Well, she could take it because then uh, the Yosemim have to be responsible for it. Oh, Dilma. I don't understand. She sold the field to a third party. A third party. Now she's collecting. Now she says, okay, fine. I right. sold the field for Mazonos. Right. I'm just selling you field because I needed Mazonos. Right. I sold you the field. But when's the, what's the date of the sale? Today, right? Yeah. Five minutes later, she says, I have a lien on it from before. But when she sells to Mazonos, doesn't she have a lien? No, no, no. The, 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 no, no, no. First of all, if she does, that's even better. Why wouldn't she? Okay. The Ksuba is the lien on everything. Right. Okay, fine. Now she sells it from Mazonos, right. right? She sells it from Mazonos. So now Yanko has the field. Now she says, what? I gotta, I'm taking away the field because I have a lien from 20 years ago for the Ksuba. Her, that very same lien is what she's collecting with now. The sale is a new sale. She just sold it to Yanko. Now she said, I, you know, whatever the reason was, she sold it to Yanko because she needs food. Now she comes and says, wait a minute, I have a lien on that field. So do you say, wait a minute, since the Achrayas is on the Yisomim, they have to make good on it. Too bad. The Achrayas on the Yisomim, she sold it. The Achrayas is on them. So if she takes it away, they have to, they, they, she can go, the uh, Yanko could go to the Yisomim. Odilma Masyamale, they could say, or the purchaser, this Yanko could say, listen, I understand. When you sold us the field today, we understand that if somebody has a prior lien on the field, we're taking that chance, right? We should have checked the survey and all that stuff. You know, you check the records to see if somebody has. We understand that. If somebody else had a field, we, you didn't accept that point. You only sold it today. You didn't accept upon yourself a chryas there. Not your a chryas, the Yisomim, but a chryas and a shach milok But we expect that you, ex that you accepted the responsibility, the obligation of yourself. In other words, when you woman sold it to us, that you weren't going to come and take it back from us, that you're responsible for that, at least from your own point of view. You understand? We understand that when we bought a field today and you say, I don't accept any responsibility, it's not mine, I'm just selling it because I need food, right? I'm selling the Orshman's food and I accept no responsibility if somebody has a prior lien on it. Somebody else has a prior lien on it. Let's say there was a Balcho who the husband who died now, her husband who died now, he owed money some, to somebody from 40 years ago. And that field was subject to that field was, uh, was obligated to that loan. Now she married him 20 years ago. He died now. She married him 20 years ago. So the Balchov is a prior lien on it before her ksuba. So the guy Yankel who bought the field today could say, I understand if there was a prior uh, lien there. I understand you're not responsible for that. But you have to be responsible for the sale that you yourself just made. You sold the Tasta. I, I didn't expect you to come and take it from us, that you're responsible for that. 
It's his job to it's his job to check it out. He says to, to check it out. His job to check it out. Or maybe he knew about it, and that's his argument. I know you had a chibur, but you're not going to come and collect your your you you, you yourself sold it to me. I understand if somebody else. That's what he said. Nida chayas You didn't accept responsibility of if somebody else would come with a prior lien, but your own responsibility. I thought you would accept. On um, relay say that was the question that he asked. The, the boy, that was the question that we started. But Shesh, they asked this question of Shesh, says, if she sells a field from his owners, a field of the Asomim, she sells it from his owners, can she go back and distrain upon it? Can she go take it back? On relay, Tanisua, do you learn? She's allowed to sell the Yorshim's property to collect from his owners up until the amount of Riksuba, or down, let's say, down to the amount of Riksuba. She knows how, let's say, she has somebody come in and evaluate how much everything is worth. So she could sell it for Amazonas up down up, up until the amount of Riksuba. The Samachla and whatever's left, she can rely on. She take Riksuba some and a Shashuk left from the, from the rest. Shema, you know, you see, Shaira ain't. If she left something over, then she can collect Riksuba, low Shaira low. In other words, it's a valid argument. This that the Yankel could say, you have to accept respond. You yourself sold it to me. You have to accept least responsibility for that, that you're not going to come and take it right back. That, why? Because we see in the Bryce, the Bryce says she's allowed to sell. Down until the amount, how much can she sell all the orphan's property? Down until there's left just the amount for the ksuba. But if she left, if she, that means if she left that amount, she could collect the ksuba from there. If she didn't leave it because she sold it off to Yankel, and now there's nothing to collect from, uh, then she can't. Says Mar, who says, why is that such a proof? Dilma eight satava kamash man. Maybe it's only telling you she should leave something there, the liquor and nice, that she shouldn't be called an Indian giver. You know what do you mean? You sold it to me, and now you're taking it right back. Maybe that's just good advice. But if she actually did it, maybe she could claim if she doesn't mind being called an Indian giver, maybe she could take it back. Because in Cain, if that would be the case, listen, they go with Subasa Minashar. She should just say she should collect it from the rest. My Samachla, that she can rely on that. Shmamina, that that's all she can rely on. She could only rely on whatever's left after she sold from Zonos. For her Ksuba, she has to leave something that eclectic. Ksuba, Shire and Lo, Shire Lo. That is to say that if there's not enough for Ksuba and for Mizonos, too bad she just gets her ksuba. If she sold it off from Zona, she has nothing left. Why, why doesn't, I don't understand. Why doesn't she have a first lien? The guy never, the, the, the third party, Yanko, owes her money, right? No. Let's say he doesn't pay. No, no. We're talking about where she sold it. No, she, she sold it and he paid. To a third party. He doesn't know. Yeah. Th- on this, and he has to pay her, we said, every year, every six months, whatever it is. No, no. Right? That's, yeah, yeah. That, well, that, does she right. have a lien on that? No. Uh, uh, she has the, uh, no, yeah. Let's she, say he doesn't pay. We're talking about where he paid already. We're talking about what he paid already. If he paid already, if he didn't pay, then sure he can argue it out. He could say, I'm not going to pay you. Right, you're not going to pay you. No, we're talking about where he paid her already. He paid for the whole thing. He paid for the whole thing. She sold the whole thing. She sold it. And now she wants to claim it back again. He paid for it already. Can she take it back anyway, despite the fact that he paid for it? Because she has a prior lien. Even if he paid for it. When you, when, but it would yeah. be the same if he didn't pay her. She if he could come and say, I want my, yeah, I want my yeah, suit. Yeah, she could say that too. She but could say she, that but, too. But she certainly makes a difference. Money. The payment is not the issue. The issue is can she take the field back after right. she sold it? Right. That's the issue. So the Gemara said, no, she cannot take it back because only she has to leave enough for the Ksuba. If she sold the Ksuba also, she sold the value of the field that's related to the Ksuba, she can't take that back. Iboilu, Zobin Voitzukhale, Zuzi. How does he know how to Here's an interesting question. In general, we have a cloud that Dvarm Shabalev ain't a Dvarm. Something that was in your mind that you didn't specify, that does, it has no meaning. But over here, when it was known that a man sold something and then he didn't need the money, he was desperate. He was desperate, he needed money to pay off something or to buy something, he had to buy some merchandise or he needed it to buy something else, whatever he needed it for. And then it turned out that he didn't need the money. He didn't specify it up front, but it was known that he, that he was only selling, let's say his house, because he needed the money for something that he was desperate for. And then it turned out, situation changed. He came into some money from some other place. Can he go back on the deal? Can the deal go back or not? So Toshma, Dukav, again, if you specified it, obviously you specified, I'm only selling it on such and such a condition. But here he didn't specify it, but apparently it was known that that was what he needed to do. Because if it wasn't known, it's what we call Dvarm Shabalev. So here it was no Tashma, the Ugava, the Zavan Arla for a papa. Man sold the field for a papa. This Chazuz a Lemizman Turi, because he needed the money to buy oxen. He couldn't plow his field. So he sold a piece of land that, she, that he didn't want to sell. 
but he was forced to sell because he needed to buy oxen. Let's sell floats or chalet. At the end, he came into some other money and he didn't need to sell his this field. Then he did. He said, well, the the Ashi says, but on a Yodim show you chafas like a sort of plonio pragmatia plonio. We know about that. At the end, he didn't need it. Shachazer Baruchim either either the shachazer um, uh, the people who wanted to sell him the field, to sell him the oxen, uh, didn't want to sell it to him. Whatever the situation changed, either he came into some money, he didn't need the money anymore, or the people that he was going to buy the oxen from didn't want to sell it to him anymore, so he didn't need the money at the end. But Hatmin or Papa, a Papa, a Papa gave him back his field. In other words, he sold the field to a Papa because he was desperate for money, and they knew that. And then uh, when he didn't, he didn't need the money anymore for whatever reason. The deal fell apart, or he came into some other money. Rapapa returned the land. Um, return it back. So that's a proof, Lachora, that if you don't need the money, after you needed the money, you sold it under one understanding, and then you didn't need it, the deal's off. The Gemara says, no, Rapapa lifted the Mishra, so didn't hudav. Maybe Rapapa went beyond the strict interpretation of the law. Maybe Rapapa said, no, you sold me the field. You didn't put, you didn't specify, you didn't stipulate in the deal that it's only if the other deal comes across, you sold me the field. But if Papa was a nice guy, and in the other system, he knew that he knew the guy what it really didn't want to sell the field, so he gave it back to him. So you can't prove it from there. Tashma from another case. Nada had a famine. Nada, like most of the rivers and most of the cities in those days, were on the river. And the, the wheat, et cetera, came from Ukraine or from wherever it came via the river. And there was a famine in Nada. There was no wheat. Everybody sold their houses, their palaces. They sold all their their land, and because they were desperate, they they had no they had no wheat, no money, etc. It was a famine, so they sold everything, and then great great inflation, whatever. Then at the end, wheat did show up. Amalur of Nachman said, "Dinu You got to give the houses back because they only sold it with the understanding. Nobody wanted to sell their homes. They sold it because they were desperate." So here you see that the deal can go back. Gemara says, no, Hasam Nami is Vina Batoa Sabe. There was also a mistaken sale. The Gloy Melsa, it turns out, the Arba Bakule have a Kaima, that the, the, the ship that had the wheat was in the bays, meaning there was like a high tide and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't dock. And the, the ships were out uh, somewhere beyond the uh, vision of the, of, the, of the city, but they were on the way. So it turns out it was a mistake. They thought there's not going to be any wheat and they're going to be starving and they had to sell their houses and everything they can just to get a little bread. So they were, there was a famine. So, they, but they were, they, were, they were sold under a misunderstanding. It was a mekechtos. And if it's mekechtos, it's uh, the deal, uh, the deal is off. It was only sold under that understanding. It was clear to everybody that they were only selling their houses because they were desperate because there was a, there was a drought, there was a famine and there was no food. But had they known that wheat was just around the corner, they wouldn't have sold in there for the deal goes back. The buyer can also back out? Yeah, they can all back out. They can all back out. The deal's off. When you say the deal's off, the deal's off automatically. Ihachi, so now we're going to see the way Rashi, the Rashi tells us to disagree here about the Pshat. So Ihachi, where it says, Hainadam Leresh Rami Bar Shmuel Rav Nachman. This is, this makes sense with the following dialogue, meaning that it was a Mekhtos. Why? Because Rambar Shmuel then said to Rav Nachman, if you're going to go back on the deal and came Nitzis Machshil Lasulavo, you're going to fool the people. In other words, you're going to cause them to stumble in the future. Why? Because if you can go back, all these people sold their houses because they thought there was a famine and there really was no famine. Then in the future, also nobody's going to want to. Uh, nobody's going to be able to sell their homes. Nobody's going to buy it because everybody's going to say, "Oh, I'm going to buy something," and then tomorrow you're going to go back on the deal. That's what Rav Shmuel said to Rav Nachman. According to what you're doing, that you're telling everybody to return, everybody gets their homes back. Nobody's going to, you're not going to find any buyers in the future. Everybody's going to be uh, reticent to buy something and they're going to lose it right afterwards. Amalei, so if Nachman said to him, you think it's a common that there should be a famine here? Uh, it's not common. It is common. It is common for there to be a, a famine. So according to the way Rashi learns, the Tosis learns it differently, brings on the Rashbam, but he, he says the way Rashi learns is that that in Cain, he puts in the words in Cain at the beginning of this dialogue, it's, it, it's like vadai. Rashi says here, if you look in Rashi's Lashon Yachi, hainu vadai, hainu vadai de omerle. Not ihochi uh, uh, hainu, just without hainu, but he says ihochi hainu vadai. This makes sense with this argument that what? 
that Rami Bashmul said to Rav Nachman, then you're gonna, nobody's gonna wanna buy fields in the future. And he said, well, there's not always a famine. He says, yeah, there's a, it is common to have a famine here. And whenever there's a famine, you can assume, says Rashi, where maybe the boats are right around the corner. You can't see them. They're out in the bays with the high tide and the deal's gonna go off. So uh, that's, it, it is very common to have that. And therefore, you're, nobody's going to buy fields. Nobody's going to want to buy fields anymore. In other words, Rabbi Shmuel had said to him, if you're going to go back on the deal, uh, well, it's very common here that there could be famines and this is going to be a common occurrence, et cetera. And therefore, the deal is always going to be off because it's a mekechtos. The Rashi goes on right before the mission. Rashi goes on to say, the, if, if, if it was not because of this misunderstanding, they thought that there's a famine. There really was no famine because the boats were just around the corner. But if there wouldn't have been this issue, simply was that the guy sold because uh, he needed the money and then it turns out he didn't need the money or, or the, 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 this individual who sold got some weed himself on the side uh, and he didn't need it at the end, then, uh, then there wouldn't be any michshel. It's a michshel. If, if it was a rare occurrence, then it's not gonna be a michshel. Michshel means, well, if everybody gets their, everybody who sold their field or their house gets it back, uh, gets it back right away, nobody's gonna to wanna to buy. That's because it's a common occurrence. If it wouldn't be a common occurrence, then it's a straight, then it's a rare thing. Then it's not going to prevent other purchasers from buying it. The issue was the michshol. But according to Pshat and Rashi, the Gemara now, the Gemara's final maskana is against us because what are we saying till now? What have we said in the case of Rapapa? Oh, Rapapa went with Nimishur Sadin. What about the case of the famine in Arda? Oh, that was a mekachtos. Uh, that's why it went back. But the gist of this is, is that really once you make a deal. Even if the other guy knows it, it's because you need the money, but it's not a mekach tos. It wasn't based on a misunderstanding or a Republican interest in basically. You wouldn't be able to go back on a deal once you sold it, even if your circumstances changed. But the halach is otherwise. Ve'ochel says the Gemara at the end of the Gemara, ve'ochel says, zavim lo'itzchel zuzay hardus If you sold something and you didn't need the money, you sold it because you needed the money and people knew that you needed the money. So even though you didn't stipulate it, if you sold it only with that understanding because you needed the money, and then at the end you didn't need the money, the deal could go back. According to Rashi, the way Rashi learned, the Hilchasa goes against the gist of what the Gemara has been saying. According to Tosis, brings down a different shot to understand that, that it's Ihochi. He, does, he doesn't say, like Rashi says, Ihochi, oh, Vade, this makes sense with what Rav Shmuel said to Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman answered him. Shmuel said, yeah, it is very common to have a famine here. Therefore, it is common to have a Mechshel, the way Rashi learns. Etc. But then the halach is otherwise. According to the way Tosfos brings on a different shot, that the just the, the dialogue would tell us that just the opposite, that uh, that the sale isn't uh, the sale does go back even not because it's shchir or not shchir, because the truth is he says Rashi says Rashbam brings on Rashi that even if a famine is, is common, it's not common for the ships to be stuck in the bay, and therefore uh, if it go if the deal goes back. The deal goes back simply because his circumstances changed, not because it was a mekechtos. It's not a mekechtos. Mekechtos means the whole thing was a misunderstanding. Here, our issue is if you sold it because you needed the money. There was no misunderstanding at the time. You needed the money right now. It wasn't like you didn't know something. Afterwards, the situation changed. Afterwards, you came into some money. Or the guy that you needed the deal for uh, fell apart, the deal for, for some other reason. That's our issue. Does that deal go back or not? The Gemara Paskins, yeah, the deal goes back, but presumably it's only when there's a, you, you, the, the purchaser knew that the guy was selling because he was desperate for some other uh, purchase for some other reason that he needed it. If he didn't know about it, the heart says, Yeah, that's what the Gemara says. Yeah, yeah. If, there, if it was apparently, yeah, that's the Gemara says, Hilch, that's the Gemara's sock. But again, it's where the guy knew, the purchaser knew that he did it only because he needed the money. Well, you wouldn't do that in common law, presumably you wouldn't do that today. Right. Otherwise, every deal, you know, you get it. But it's only for you, right, right. It's too complicated, right. So the Tanakama says here, the Tanakama is usually is mayors, we'll see, says that an Amana, whether she's an Amana Mena meaning she wasn't really married, the marriage was never consummated, or a suin, Mechersh Besan. She's entitled to sell, right? She's entitled to sell venison. Now, a girl from Ayerson has no mazonas yet because the husband doesn't have to feed her. So when she's, what is she selling for? The ksuba. Again, as we talked before, it's either in a place where they gave the ksuba for a Ayerson, they had a ksuba there, or, or he happened to write the ksuba and he says, you get it even from Ayerson. Now he died before he ever consummated. 
So the Tanakhama says, Bein Me'erson, where she's only collecting the Ksuba, there's no Mazonas there, or Bein Me'erson, where there's even Mazonas, she can sell without that, says the Tanakhama. Rav Shimon disagrees. Rav Shimon says, Bein Me'erson, if she's entitled to food, that means she was married, she was fully married, and he has to give him zonos. Like, so, but there is no zonos. Low Tim Crow Besson, sell with Besson. Why should you go to Besson? Why, why should she be able to sell it on her own for the Ksuba? There's no, there's no uh, um, urgency. There's no urgency. She doesn't need food now. She's not getting food anyway. So she's selling for the Ksuba. You know, and selling for the Ksuba, she's got to do it with Besson to make sure that Besson approves it. Far from say that even without a Besson, she should sell it with her. She has to be three commoners. She just can't evaluate it on her own. What does she know about? About purchasing, yes, you should at least have a shamai or, or three experts who know what the process is worth, but you don't need a bezin. Nishayin Lamazonas says Rabbi Shimon, she's not entitled to food. Call Shayin Lamazonas, let him go bezin. If she's not getting it for food, for food, we understand. I need food, I'm hungry today. I can't wait till bezin opens up tomorrow. So that we understand. But if it's for, um, uh, but if it's for the uh, ksuba, then she should go to bezin. The Tanakhama says no. The Tanakhama says whether she's collecting for the erison, meaning, whether she's only collecting ksuba or she's collecting for the food where she's been married already, everybody agrees that she only gets mazonas if she's been married. The question is, can she sell without a bezdin even for the ksuba or only for mazonas? So Shimon says only for mazonas, and therefore, if she's on Marman Anderson, she doesn't collect. So the Mark explains that. Bishlam and assume she's I understand why she's allowed to collect. She's allowed to sell, again, the Orshman's property, um, even if they're not, uh, you know, without their approval. She's allowed to sell uh, their property to collect Mazonos. I understand. Elamina Ayerson. So Benanasu, and I understand because of Mazonos. But Mena Ayerson, where she doesn't have Mazonos, why should she be allowed to collect even without a Bezdin? My time. You know what? If you make it too difficult for women to collect their Ksuba, where she's not getting Mazonos, she's only getting Ayerson, if you make it too difficult for them, they're not going to want to get married. Oh, you're giving me a Ksuba? Big deal. You know, I got to go to court. It's a whole big mess. You have to go to court. She doesn't want to bother with that. So Mishim Chinner says that the women should find, that the husbands should find grace in the eyes of the woman for goodwill. So we say, you know what? If she has to collect her ksuba, she has not to go to Besim there. It's like very simply why. A man doesn't want his wife, he's what, I mean, he dies. And he doesn't, he didn't want his wife to have to go to Besdin to collect. So therefore, a person doesn't want his wife to be embarrassed to go to Besim. To, to, it's, it's embarrassing. So the rabbi said she can collect the ksuba even without going to court, without, without going to court. In other words, she, she has to sell property. She can sell without a court, uh, court order uh, with an evaluation, et cetera. My bad, what's the difference from these two reasons? Either way, according to the Tanakhama, she can collect without going to, she can collect the ksuba by selling a property without going to court. My bad, can be a grusha if she's divorced. Madam shumchina, grushanami boy chain. If the reason is because of chain, in other words, women, what does it mean, chen? A woman who, as we'll explain in a minute, a, 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 a woman who has been intimate with her husband, now she has to go to court to collect what was due her. Well, you know what? Even though she's divorced now, a woman still needs chen. You still want to encourage women to get married. So if she's a grusha, she still is entitled to collect without going to court. But if the reason why you say she can collect without going to court is because a man doesn't want his wife to be divorced, to, to have to go to court to collect. It's too embarrassing. You know what? Grusha, he doesn't care if she's divorced. If he divorces his wife, he doesn't care. Let her go to court. He doesn't want to. That's usually the feeling once they uh, hate one another. Um, so therefore, it's not because of, no, he says, Grusha, um, if, if it's because of Chayn, so uh, it's not, it's the Kanas not because of the husband loves her, or uh, it doesn't mean he loves her or he hates her. It's because she should have Chayn. She's the women in general should say, listen, once you have been intimate with your husband, you should be entitled to collect without going to Besson. But if the reason is he doesn't want his wife to get embarrassed, a grusha, a grusha, he doesn't care. And therefore, a grusha would have to go to court to collect. Okay. If not, our mission. But what? Okay, the reason that, the reason, what's the underlying the reason? What's, yeah, there. no, no, what's the underlying reason for the chacham? When the chacham said that you can collect with a court or without a court, she's entitled to the ksuba. But they say, okay, does she have to go to court or not? Well, number one, uh, Reb Shimon says, if she's not collecting Mazonos, right, she has, 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 definitely has to go to court. But Rameir, the Tanakama, who says she, that she doesn't have to go to court even when she's collecting a tzuba, what's the reason for that? 
Why? Mina Irison, when she's not collecting Mizonos, writes reason. I understand when she has to go to court when she has to collect food, but when she has to, when she's just getting a tzuba, why shouldn't she have to go to court? So reason reasons because the rabbi said otherwise women will be discouraged from uh, from mar- from getting married because they have to. It's a whole big process for them to collect the tzuba. Rabbi Yochanan says no. The reason is is the man himself when he gives the tzuba, he he's like he mochel her to go to court. No, it's, it's it's an understanding that he has that. However, that only applies if he's if he dies. If he divorces her, then we understand that his will would have been let her go to court and collect it. I don't we want to. The, the, the chacham, of course, we we care. Right. It's 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 he's the one. It's his estate that's going to her. It's yeah. his estate that's going to her. He's the one who's paying it. He, he owes it. So the question is, how much do? What does she have to do to collect it? So the rabbi said, uh, if the reason is because of chayin, then either way, uh, it's a general idea that once a woman has lived with a man, in general, women want to know that they're not going to have to go to court. If the reason is because. The reason why uh, you don't have to go to court is because a man wouldn't want his own wife to go to, to go to court. He doesn't want her to be embarrassed. But if he divorces her, then that reason won't apply. In other words, what's the reason why you don't have to go to court? What's the underlying reason why the rabbi said you don't have to go to court even to collect the ksuba? So is the underlying is a general idea for all women or is it for specific for this man? And in this case, if this man divorced her, he doesn't care. It says the Gemara, Tanan, the Gushal, some call the best. And the next mission we're going to have on this stop says, it's, it's the actual of Shimon says that, Rugusha lo timka lo bezin. Rugusha can only sell in bezin. So Mishlam man damer lo pisha ena and most of the bezin. If you say, if this, the reason is like we just said, he that man doesn't want his wife to be embarrassed by having to go collect in court in bezin. So Rugusha lich mesle. He doesn't care about the Rugusha. Makes sense. It says Rugusha lo timka elo be bezin. Ela man damer shemchina. If the reason is because of grace, Rugusha nami boy chen. Rugusha also has to have grace. In other words, Rugusha also has to be able to want to get married. Chen means we're saying that. We don't want women to be discouraged from getting married. So, Grusha Nami Boy Chang, Gemara says, oh, how money Rab Shimon? That part of the Mishnah, even though the first part of Mishnah goes like Rab Shimon, the last part of Mishnah also goes like Rab Shimon, goes like Rab Shimon. And Rab Shimon says, doesn't hold of Chang, because he says that if a woman is only collecting Grusuba, Amonim and Aresin, she has to go to court. Well, obviously, he doesn't hold the reason of Chang, because if the reason is because of Chang, so then uh, what's the difference if she's a, a Rusa or a Nasua? How money Rab Shimon? If it's Rab Shimon, we already learned the Rasha. So what's Rab Shimon teaching me? Why do you tell me over here? The end of the mission says the next mission, if you look down a few lines, Grusha Lo Timko Elo Bebezin. So all that goes like Rab Shimon. Rab Shimon already said in the first mission, on the first mission that we learned on Amar Alf, the bottom of Alf, Rab Shimon says over there that what? That Mina Erison Lo Timko Elo Bebezin. So if we're speaking about, if it's Reb Shimon who says that you can only collect from Bezin, so he, we already know that a Grusha cannot, uh, cannot collect because she's only collecting Ksuba. Grusha, it's clear from everybody, Grusha doesn't get Mazonos. And Amana gets Mazonos, so Grusha only gets her Ksuba. So it says over there, we already know that. It's not the same. Here's the point. Amana Meirison never was intimate with her husband. So therefore, in general, the concept of Chen is what we want. We don't want women to have to be married and then have to go to court to collect. But that may be apply only when women were fully married, they were intimate with their husband, right? So there you might say, and therefore maybe their Rav Shimon holds, doesn't hold of Chen, because she's a Manamena Ereson and there she would have to go to court because you know the reason of Chen doesn't apply, she was never intimate. In other words, women in general would not mind if a woman who was never intimate with her husband uh, would have to go to court because you know he wasn't that close to them anyway. Abagusha the nafish who's been married, she's been intimate with her husband. Amiti boy maybe chen does apply there. Kamash Malan, the Rab Shimon holds. You know what? No, even a grusha who was intimate with her husband, she has got her best because Rab Shimon doesn't hold the chen at all. That's the point of the last line of the next Mishnah. That's why he says grusha lo tiboy a grusha can only collect with uh, by going to court. Um, that she doesn't have to. This is That was also said in the Mishnah on Aleph when Rabbi Shimon, the end of the Mishnah Aleph said, says there, Kol Mazonos, right? If a woman doesn't have Mazonos, that means a woman doesn't have Mazonos at all, right? What, why wouldn't a woman have Mazonos? If she's an Amana, maybe it's an Amana Mena Erisim. If she's a Grusha, because she's a Grusha, she doesn't have Mazonos. It says there, Kol Sheinla Mazonos, she has to go to court. Doesn't come to include Grusha. So again, if an Amar Aleph, Reb Shimon said, "Kol Shemim Mazonos Lo Timkel Bevesim," 
That means a grusha. So why does he have to tell me at the end of the next mission also? Grusha lo You've already said that a grusha who doesn't get mizonos should <coughs> and should have to go to court to collect her ksuba. So the kosher is la say my love la say grusha is low. La say magresha is fine magresha. A case where it's a subject. Remember a case of magresha. Let's say a man threw ksuba to a wife, to his wife. Uh, not ksuba get, and you're not sure if it got closer to her or closer to him in the shul of rabbi. So, or you're not sure if it went into a shush or not. So it's a suffix. So in a case like that, Rav Zeyer says, Rav Zeyer, Rav Zeyer, come up from Shem, and Gresh, and Gresh, where it's a suffix. Baal Chaim's on a Since she can't get married, she can, can she get married right now if she got, if she's a suffix, who should know? So in a case like that, since she can't get married, the husband still has to feed her. Ah, but now let's say the husband dies. The husband dies now. Would she collect the, uh, the would she collect the Zonos? No. Rav Zeyer says, if he's alive, so she can't get married because they're not sure if you're divorced or not. But once he's dead, where she could get married anyway. And the question is, that she still get Mazonas or not? Is she an Almana or was she a Grusha before? A Suffolk, that's a Suffolk Mamon. Most Michael Varaya can't prove it. Therefore, she wouldn't get Mazonas. And that's what he means in this case. So Rav Shimon indeed doesn't hold of Chain. And Rav Shimon says that Almana Mena Erison, where uh, Rav Mena Erison has to go to Besden, right? He has to go to Besden because he's not worried about uh, any of the other, any of the reasons like the Tanakama, she has to go to Bezin, she's not getting Mazonos, and doesn't hold of uh, of Chaim, Chaim doesn't apply, he doesn't hold of Chaim, doesn't hold of Chaim, and he doesn't hold of, even if you hold the reason of Rosh Hashanah by Grusha, that doesn't apply, and he hold, and therefore, therefore he says Grusha lo Timko of Bezin, that could be a Grusha who's a Suffolk Grusha, but in a Hanami, a regular Grusha, you could learn out from Kol She'en Mazonos because a Grusha also, not only does an, does an Arusa, an Almana who's an Arusa, uh, get, not get Mazonos, but also a Grusha wouldn't get Mazonos. There certainly you have to go to Besdin, according to Rav Shimon. Now the Gemara is like this. Um, so again, this question we're still going to deal with. It says just like she collects without bezin, we come to us. For yorshim, yorshik sabasa also mochum shloba bezin also collect without bezin. So we have these two reasons. We have said the reason is what's the reason why an arusa uh, collects according to the Tanakhama? Again, an arusa does not collect um, without going to bezin according to Shim, but according to the Tanakhama, even an arusa collects if she's an amana either because of chayim or because of shlamitus baza, the shalotus baza. So it says over there, Vaisha says, just like she sells off Bezin, her Yarshim will collect her Ksuba. Let's say after her husband dies, she's going to collect Ksuba, but then she dies. She swears she hasn't been paid yet, then she dies. Her Yarshim collected Ksuba. Without going to Bezin. If the reason is because a man doesn't want his wife to have to go to Bezin to be embarrassed, just like he doesn't want his wife to get be embarrassed, to, to, to be shamed, he doesn't want her, her children also to be embarrassed. Why shouldn't this? Why shouldn't her boys who are her yorshim go collect? What, what, what kind of chain does apply there? Chain doesn't apply to boys; it only applies to girls. Let's say her daughter or her or her sister are, are her heirs. Let's say there were no sons and there was no father. And her Yorshim are her daughter or her sister, whoever's close to her. In a case like that, Chain does apply because they also don't want to. The reason of Chain is that women, if women have to go to court, they're not going to want to get the, they're not going to want to get married. Let's say she sold part of her ksuba. She sold part of it. You know, she needed money, so she sold part of her ksuba to somebody else, or uh, the whole ksuba or part of it. Or Mishkarik Sabas, or she used it as a collateral, or Mixasa, or Nasik Sabas Lachar, or she gave it to somebody else, or Mixasa, Lo Timkar Sashal of the Then she, the rest can only be collecting Bezin. This we'll see is also Rab Shimon. This is Rab Shimon. As Rab Shimon holds that if you that if you already redeemed, either you sold it, redeemed it, use it for a collateral, part of the Ksuba, she's not in Tatha Mazonis anymore. If she's not in Tatha Mazonis, what Rab Shimon say in the first Mishnah, once you're not in Tatha Mazonis, you have to collect in court. Because it's not, you're not desperate. The Chum say no. Even if she sold, if you sold your whole ksuba, then you're not entitled to Mazonis anymore. Because that's like, I'm out of here. I'm out of the family. But if you sold part of the ksuba, she's still entitled to Mazonis according to the Chachamim. So the Chum Omim, Mochi Yafil Avra Chim she could sell parts of her ksuba in, in stages. And she's still, Mochi Yafil Avra Chim And she could still sell Mazonis. 
the Kesevis and she writes, as we learn as Eitzah Tova, Kesevis Lemezonis Macharati, I'm selling from Mezonis, V'grusha lo timkra lo bevezim. So here's an interesting thing. The first part of the mission we said before V'chamam is of Shimon. Then we have the Chacham Shita. They hold you can sell your Kesev in stages and still collect Mezonis. And the last part, the Grusha lo timkra lo bevezim, that's from Shimon. Why? Because according to the Chachamim, we saw him at Aleph, even if she's a Grusha, she has to collect either because, if the reason is because of Chaim. If the reason comes to Chaim, she should, she, she should be able to sell with, without going to court. But if you say Grusha Latim called the Bezin, that would be like Rab Shimon. Mastis and Huruzan Mishnah go like the first part of Mishnah Rab Shimon. The Tanya Mach Kisubasa or Mishkanta Kisubasa or Sibza Apotik Al Akhir, if she either sold the Ksuba or gave it as a collateral or told somebody else to collect for it, Lachra. Ain the Mazonas de Vermeer says once you did, if you sold the whole Ksuba, you're not in Tamil Zazar. Shimon Amr Api Shalomach or Ella Blah Mashkana Ksubas Ella Machtisa, even if Shalom did part of it, half of it, part of it, whatever, of the Mazonas sell. So that's the Machlokas in our Mishnah. If you sell, if you sell the Ksuba, if you sold the whole Ksuba, everybody agrees you're not in Tamil Zazar anymore. If you sell part of it, the Chom say you're still in Tamil Zazar, so Shimon say, no, you're not in Tamil Zazar anymore. The Maimra to say to Rab Shimon Sover, uh, the Reb Shimon Sover, the low Amina makes his Kesef to call Kesef. Reb Shimon holds that it partial is not like the whole thing. Reb Shimon says even though she's owned partial Iksuba, she can't collect Iksuba anymore. It's, uh, it's, Reb Shimon says, Sover, the lo- we don't say mixed Kesef, even though she's owned part of the Iksuba, you don't say it's like she's owed the whole Iksuba and she's not the Mazonos. For Abar and Sabri, Amina makes Kesef to Kesef. As long as she's owed part of the Iksuba, part of the money, it's like she's owed all the money and she's entitled to Iksuba. But we heard the other way around when it comes to Basula, when it comes to her virginity. Tanya, who we shall be Basula, a coin girl is only allowed to marry a virgin. That excludes the Bogaris where some of her virginity is gone. Divra Mayor, Rabbi Lazar of Shimon Omer, those are here's of Shimon, Machshim of Bogaris. They say, even though part of it's gone, it's like the whole thing is still there, and, and a coin girl could marry her. So when it comes to the Ksuba, you say, Rabbi Shimon says, partial. Is not like the whole thing. And here he says partial is like the whole thing. So Gemara says that you're talking about virginity versus money. There's two different things. Hustle McCroy plea, they're the machlokis of what's the interpretation of the Pusik. For mayor suffer Basula, when it says if it would only say Basula, I feel a mix of some. Even part of some would be okay. Basula, I think a cool some. She has to be a full virgin, meaning she's not a Bulgarian yet. She's not 12 and a half. Bipsula, the Kadaka and Shlo Kadaka low. It only is it only is prohibited if it's kedarka. If the be was shlok kedarka, we don't look at that. The laws of Shimon Savi no. Besula shleima mashma. Besula means mashma. If we just say besula, I would say it means she has to be a full virgin. She's not twelve and a half yet. Besula afila mixes psulim. Even a partial psulim, she's also considered a besula, and she could marry a kohen gadol. Bibsula she a kohen besula kayamin ben kedarka ben shlok kedarka. Here, Rav Shimon and, and Rav Lazar are machmer and say that all of that makes a difference whether she had Biyash Kedarka, Biyash Shalok Kedarka, meaning Biyash Shalom Vafil Shalok Kedarka. She can't have be at all. She had any kind of Biyah, Kedarka, Shalok Kedarka, she's forbidden to marry a Kohen Gadol. But the point that we, the key point is that a girl who's 12 and a half, who's lost part of her Psulam, she's still considered like a Psula because that's how he interprets the Pasik, the word Basula. Instead of Basula, it says Bisula. And it says Bisula. So Bisula, according to Shimon, means even if she has partial, that's considered like she has the whole thing. But over here, when it comes to the Ksuba, partial is not like the whole thing. So if she sold part of her Ksuba, she's no longer entitled to Mazonos. All right. Uh, we'll pick it up from the, net, from the second line in Shem tomorrow. Have a good day. Moadim Lesimcha. Quite an analogy.